ready? Yeah. All right. So from chapter six of the teachings for victory by Daisaku Ikeda, last week, last week we read the whole Gosha of the blessings of the Lotus Sutra, and now we're going to go into selected passages and a lecture by President Ikeda. This starts on page 85 of this uh, lecture. Yes. The blessings of the Lotus Sutra. Personal, personal initiative is the Soka Gakkai's founding spirit. What's it mean by that? Anybody got it? Personal. You have to do it out of your own heart. Huh? Personal initiative. You have to. Yeah, personal initiative is the Soka Gakkai's founding spirit. Basically, it starts with one. That's what this is all going to come about. This is going to be like the whole premise of this Go Show is to understand that the correct attitude as a Bodhisattva of the earth is that you will achieve Kosen Rufu by yourself regardless of what anybody else does. You know, the original mentor has spoken to your life, you've connected, you know what your job is, you're a bodhisattva of the earth, it's to do Kosen Rupa. You'll do it no matter what happens, no matter what's going on around you, you don't need other encouragement or other benefit, you just want to uh, fulfill your, your, your uh, commitment and vow to the, uphold the law in the latter day. All right, so he says, the passage of study for this lecture, this is from the Go Show. The first of the five precepts is to not take life, and the first of the six paramitas is that of almsgiving. The ten good precepts, the 250 precepts, the ten major precepts, and all the other rules of conduct, conduct begin with the prohibition against the taking of life. Every being from the highest sage on down to the smallest mosquito or gnat holds life to be its most precious possession. To provide, to deprive a being of life is to commit the gravest kind of sin. When the thus come one appeared in the, this world, he made compassion for all living things his basis, and as an expression of compassion for life, to refrain from taking life and to provide sustenance for living beings are the most in, uh, important precepts. In providing another with sustenance, the first of the six pyramids, almsgiving, right? Yeah. One obtains three kinds of benefit. First, one sustains one's own life. Second, one brings color to one's face. Third, one gains strength. Yeah. If we inquire into the origin of Mount Sumeru, we find that it began with a single speck of dust. And likewise, the great ocean began with a single drop of dew. One added to one becomes two, two becomes three, and so on to make ten a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand, or, a, a, or an asamyak. Yet one is the mother of all. Bodhisattva superior practices, who is entrusted with the Daimoku, the core of the essential teaching, had not yet appeared in the world. But now he will appear in the latter day of the law and propagate the five characters of Myoho Rengeko to all the nations and people throughout Jampadvipa. Surely it will spread just as the invocation of Amida's name is spread throughout Japan at the present time. I, Nichiren, am not the founder of any school, nor, I am a la nor am I a latter-day follower of any older school. I am a priest without precepts, neither keeping the precepts nor breaking them. I am an ordinary creature like an ox or a sheep who is neither particularly wise nor ignorant. Why did I first begin to chant as I do? Bodhisattva superior practices is the one destined to make his advent in this world to propagate the five characters of Myoho Rengekyo. But before he had even appeared, I began, as though speaking in a dream, hardly aware of what I was doing, to utter the words, Nam Myoho Rengekyo. And so I chant them now. But I am different from such persons. I firmly hold the, uphold the teaching that the Lotus Sutra is supreme among the sutras the Buddha has preached, now preaches, and will preach. Moreover, I chant the Daimoku, which is the heart and core of the entire sutra, and I urge others to do likewise. Although the mugwort growing in a hemp field or wood marked for cutting with an ink line may not be straight to begin with, they will, as a matter of course, become so. In the same way, when one chants the Daimoku as the Lotus Sutra teaches, um, will, pardon me, one who chants the Daimoku as the Lotus Sutra teaches will never have a twisted mind. For one should know that unless the mind of the Buddha enters into our bodies, we cannot in fact chant the Daimoku. In this entire country of Japan, I am the only one who has been chanting nam myoho I am like the single speck of dust that marks the beginning of Mount Sumeru 
by the single drop of dew dispels the start of the great ocean. Probably two people, three people, ten people, a hundred people will join in chanting it until it spreads to one province, two provinces, and then all 60 provinces of Japan and reaches even to the two, uh, two islands of Iki and Tsushima. Those persons who have spoken slanderously of me will come in time, uh, will in time chant in the same way. And for everyone from the ruler on down to the multitude of common people will, as described in the Supernatural Powers chapter of the Lotus Sutra, chant Nam Yoho Rengeki with a single voice. Though the trees may desire to be still, the wind will not cease to blow. Though we may wish for spring to linger, it will, not, it will give way to summer. In view of all of this, your sincerity in sending a gift of five strings of blue duck to coins whenever the opportunity arises truly uh, emanates, uh, or pardon me, entitles you to be known as one who propagates the Daimoku of the Lotus Sutra in Japan. At first one person, then two persons, then a thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand, then all the people throughout the country come to chant the Daimoku. Before you know it, their blessings will accrue to you. These bless those blessings will be like the drops of dew that gather to form the great ocean, or the specks of dust that pile up to become Mount Sumeru. The more gold is heated in the flames, the brighter will, its uh, will be its color. The more a sword is wetted, the sharper it will become. And the more one praises the blessings of the Lotus Sutra, the more one's own blessings will increase. Bear in mind that the 28 chapters of the Lotus Sutra contain only a few passages elucidating the truth, but a great many words of praise. Okay? Everybody with me? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So starting President Ikeda's lecture on page 89, he says, My mentor, second president, or par pardon me, second Soka Gakkai president, Jose Toda, said with deep determination, I will strive for Kosen Rufu, even if no one else does, even if I am all alone. As his disciple, I have exerted myself with this same standalone spirit, firmly resolved to work for Kosen Rufu and open the way forward, no matter what the situation. It starts with me. It starts from now. As long as we have this courageous, self-motivated spirit of a Lion King in faith, we can definitely triumph over all <coughs> adversity. The noble undertaking of Kosen Rufu in the latter day of the law began with the solitary, selfless struggle of Nichiren Daishonin, who pledged to lead all people to enlightenment. Similarly, the present flow of worldwide Kosen Rufu we see today also began with Tenesaburo Makaguchi and Jose Toda, our first and second presidents, standing up to correctly practice the Daishonin's teachings and establish the Soka Gakkai. Personal initiative, self-motivation, is the very essence of the Soka Gakkai's founding spirit. So I guess me reading this isn't in conflict with that, right? Personal initiative, self-motivation, is the very essence of the Soka Gakkai's founding spirit. There can be no conflict with what we do around this table and anything to do with the Soka Gakkai. With this point in mind, I would like to discuss the blessings of the Lotus Sutra, a writing that vividly captures the spirit of Nichiren Daishonin in his passionate commitment to strive for the happiness of humanity in the evil age of the latter day. In 1276, he wrote this letter to a lay follower named Miyomitsu, who, as it would appear from the letter's content, regularly sent him sincere offerings. In this writing, Nichiren explains the struggle to open the way for all people to attain Buddhahood based on the mystic law throughout the 10,000 years and more of the latter day began with his lone trailblazing efforts. He also declares that the time of Kosen Rufu will eventually arrive, a time when people far and wide will chant Nam Yoho Rengekyo. In addition, Nichiren confidently assures Miyomitsu that he and his wife will definitely receive boundless benefit from their, their unstinting support of him and the nascent movement to widely propagate <clears throat> the mystic law. The benefits of supporting the votary of the Lotus Sutra. The first of the five precepts is to not take life, and the first of the six paramitas is that of almsgiving. The 10 good precepts, the 250 precepts, the 10 major precepts, and all the other rules of conduct begin with the prohibition against taking life. This is from the Gosho. Mm -hmm. 
Every being, from the highest sage on down to the smallest mosquito or gnat, holds life to be its most precious possession. To deprive a being of life is to commit the gravest kind of sin. When the thus come one appeared in this world, he made compassion for living things his basis, and as an expression of compassion for life, to refrain from taking life and to provide sustenance for living beings are the most important precepts. In providing another with sustenance, one obtains three kinds of benefits. First, one sustains one's own life. Second, one's bring, one brings color to one's face. Third, one gains strength. The Go Show Lecture from President Ikeda on page 90. Nichiren Buddhism teaches that all people can manifest the sublime power of the mystic law within their lives. So what's he speaking of? That's, he's referring to actual Ichiden Sunset. Nichiren Buddhism teaches that all people can manifest the sublime power of the mystic law within their lives. It is a teaching that elucidates the fun fundamental dignity and sanctity of all life. Nichiren Daishonin begins this writing by, start, by stating that life is the most precious of all treasures. All living beings, even mosquitoes and gnats, he observes, <coughs> prize their lives. Shakyamuni Buddha himself especially valued all living things and had immense compassion for them. Nichiren points out that for these reasons, the prohibition against taking life appears first in various lists of precepts and rules of contact set forth in the Buddhist canon, including the five precepts. Regarded as equally impart, important, he adds, is making offerings of sustenance which support life. Everybody's with me? Yeah. But don't forget, many of those early teachings were all about take no life. Jainism, which started even before the, the Buddhism of Shakyamuni, yeah. like take no life, don't even kill germs, okay? Yeah. So there are other philosophies that have this same value uh, regarding the taking of life, okay? By starting this letter, am I, am I right? Yes. Okay. By starting this letter in this way, he seeks to lavish the highest praise on Myomitsu for his invaluable offerings that sustain the value, pardon me, that sustain the life of the votary of the Lotus Sutra, an act that will bring the uh, giver unimaginably great benefit. Nichiren notes that because such offerings benefit the recipient by sustaining his life, brightening his complexion, and increasing his strength, the same benefits are also gained by the giver. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. In other words, so where did the benefit and merit of, of those things that uh, that you that you came that came that you came back to you? Where did those come from? They came from the act of the almsgiving and the um, sustaining of, of, of faith, right? Mm -hmm. The Daishonin explains that givers of such offerings are assured of receiving three kinds of wondrous karmic reward. First of all, in the human and heavenly realms, the benefit of having sustained another's life will manifest as gaining long life. The benefit of having, strength to, having given strength to another <coughs> will manifest as possessing virtue and influence and winning the trust and respect of many people. And the benefit of bringing color to another's face will manifest as being endowed with the 32 features and being as graceful and dignified as the lotus flower. Nichiren also describes the karmic rewards of such offerings in the realm of Buddhahood, which appear as the three bodies of the Buddha. These benefits respectively consist of manifesting oneself as the Buddha of the Dharma body, a body that is as vast and boundless as space, manifesting oneself as a Buddha of the reward body, emanating the pure and brilliant light of supreme wisdom, and manifesting oneself as a Buddha of the manifested body, overflowing with com compassion, like Shakyamuni. Does everybody understand? That's all actual Ichin and Sunzen. Right. Thus, because actions that support and nurture life are the very heart of Buddhist practice, the benefit of providing another with sustenance manifests not only as immense good, uh, good fortune for the giver in the human and heavenly realms, but also manifests in the realm of Buddhahood by one's life being, becoming perfectly endowed with the three bodies of the Buddha in a single body. 
all right? So you not only get this benefit as it relates to life as a temporary gathering of the five components, you get this benefit that is eternal as it relates to the three bodies of the Buddha, which follow you through transmigration from that point forward. You enter the birth, the realm of birth and death in the realm of Buddhahood. You with me? Yes. Okay, so he says, making offerings, in other words, making karmic cause toward Kosen Rufu, all right, enables one to achieve good, the highest expression of which is the supreme good of attaining Buddhahood. Mm. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So your benefits start out as benefits that have to do with the secular reality of the nine worlds, but eventually those benefits sustain, they, they accrue to the point that you're able to manifest actual Ichin and Sanzen. Sixth stage. Yeah. You with me? Yes. Okay. Or at least get to fifth stage. You, you get to the level of clarity that you understand why to practice and how best to manifest great good fortune in that practice. All right? In Nichiren Buddhism, especially the person or teaching to whom the offering is made is also very important. Having the correct object of devotion to chant nam myoho renge kyo too is key, is absolutely essential. It's the difference between the correct practice and an incorrect practice. The Hinayana Sutras teach that if one makes offerings to a sage, one will be reborn in the human and heavenly realms. But by making offerings to the Lotus Sutra, the teaching for attaining Buddhahood, one can manifest the three bodies of the Buddha in one's own <coughs> life. Did you understand what he said? Mm -hmm. Let me say it again. In Nichiren Buddhism, the person or teaching to whom the offering is made is also very Im important. The Hinayana Sutras teach that if one makes offerings to a sage, one will be reborn in the human and heavenly realms. Okay? Now, Nietzsche has already qualified that he's a sage in this Go Show, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just by giving him contribution, okay, mm -hmm. or alms, mm -hmm. one can be reborn in the human or heavenly realms. He's saying, but by making offerings to the Lotus Sutra, which transcends that guy that was the temporary gathering of the five components as all human life is. Nichiren was a temporary gathering of the five components. Mm -hmm. Shakyamuni was the temporary gathering of, five, of the five components. Toda, Makaguchi. Me too. Me, all of us. We're all temporary gatherings of the five components. We never manifest when we're not temporary gatherings of the five components. Right. Mm -hmm. So he's saying, not only can we achieve the fortune to be born as human beings, we can be born as human beings that have the fortune to uh, reflect their innate tenth world that's invisible otherwise. Do you understand? That's actually a karmic reward. Do you understand? Something that was not given to them, something that they earned. Right? So he's saying, in Nichiren Buddhism, going back to that same sentence, second sentence in the first column on page 91, in Nichiren Buddhism, especially the person or teaching to whom the offering is made is also very important. The Hinayana Sutras teach that if one makes offerings to a sage, one will become reborn in the human and heavenly realms. But by making offerings to the Lotus Sutra, the teaching for attaining Buddhahood, one can manifest the three bodies of the Buddha in one's own life, which is an eternal thing. When you manifest them, they always manifest in every single life. Do you understand? That's the key. Accordingly, supporting and protecting, protecting a votary of the Lotus Sutra who expounds and spreads the ultimate teaching for gaining enlightenment is particularly praiseworthy. Okay? So whenever you find a teacher that is the teaching a correct teaching, you should support and protect that teacher mm -hmm. with your life. Okay? That's why we support and protect President Ikeda. That's why I am his disciple, even though I don't practice within the SGI organization. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Very clearly. You know from how I speak and how I read <laughs> what my life says. Okay? <laughs> Not a badge of whatever. All right? That's secular. This is all about eternal. Mm -hmm. The mission of Bodhisattva superior practices. If we inquire, this is from the Gosha, if we inquire into the origin of Mount Sumeru, we find that it began with a single speck of dust, and likewise the great ocean began with a single drop of dew. One added to one becomes two, two becomes three, and so on to make ten, a hundred, a thousand, 
10,000, 100,000, or an asamyak. Yet one is the mother of all. Bodhisattva superior practices, who is entrusted with the Daimoku, the core of the essential teaching, had not yet appeared in the world. But now he will appear in the latter day of the law and propagate the five characters of Myoho Rengekyo to all the nations and people throughout Jampadvipa, which is throughout the world, right? Surely it will spread just as the invocation of Amida's name has spread throughout Japan at the, t at the present time. So he's saying Nam Myoho Rengekyo will spread throughout the whole world and He's using the analogy of Amida, of, 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 of Nimbutsu in Japan. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. I, Nichiren, am not the founder of any school, nor am I a latter-day follower of any older school. I am a priest without precepts, neither keeping the precepts nor breaking them. I am an ordinary creature like an ox or a sheep, who is neither particularly wise nor ignorant. Why did I first begin to chant as I do? Bodhisattva superior practices is the one destined to make his advent in this world to propagate the five characters of Myoho Rengekyo. But, but, but before he had even appeared, I began as though speaking in a dream, hardly aware of what I was doing to utter the words Nam Myoho Rengekyo. And so I chant them now. Mm. God, that spooks me out every time I read it. Every towering, even towering Mount Sumeru began from a single speck of dust. And the vast ocean began from a single drop of dew. All things start from small steps or beginnings. This is the central theme of the blessings of the Lotus Sutra. As an old proverb says, one is the mother of 10,000 from a sage and an unenlightened man, WD 131. In this writing, we also find the words one added to one becomes two, two becomes three, and so on to make 10, 1,000, a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand, or an asamya. Yet one is the mother of all. In the same way, the widespread propagation of the mystic law in the latter day began with a single person, Nichiren Daishonin. To clarify this point, the Daishonin first offers a brief outline of the history of Buddhism in Japan, highlighting the propagation of the Lotus Sutra. By Nichiren's time, 700 years had passed since Buddhism was first introduced to the country. Over that period, various Buddhist teachers had highly esteemed the Lotus Sutra, but none had spread the Daimoku or title of the Lotus Sutra, Nam Myoho Rengekyo. While the practice or calling on the names of the Amida Buddha, Mahavrachana Buddha, or Shakyamuni Buddha had become widespread, Nichiren asserts that there has never been anyone who urged them to chant Nam Myoho Rengekyo the Daimoku, or title of the Lotus Sutra. This indicated that many people had placed their faith in gaining rebirth in the Pure Land through the, benefit, uh, through the benevolent power of the vow of Amida Buddha. Let me say that again. This indicated that many people had placed their faith in regaining rebirth in the Pure Land through the benevolent power of the vow of Amida Buddha. What was the vow of Amida Buddha? To save any person that called out his name. To bring any person that called out his name, asked for help, asked for salvation, he would bring them to his Buddha land in the West. That was the whole thing about Amida. It was as simple as that. All you've got to do is say his name and Amida will come save your ass. Okay? That's a lot different than chanting Nam Myoho Rengekyo, even though it's a, a verbalization. All right? Or they had sought salvation by Mahavrochana Buddha, or even had revered Shakyamuni Buddha. But few had shown the same kind of faith, veneration, or devotion towards the Lotus Sutra. The Lotus Sutra had been prized and studied as a teaching for the protection of the nation and as a sutra that elucidated the profound doctrines of, a single, of the single vehicle of Buddhahood. But it had never truly become a central focus of faith for ordinary people. Why? Because Honen, the... And Nibutsu had spread everywhere, said, it's too difficult, reject it, don't even waste your time. Yes. So Nichiren refers to the history of Buddhism in India and China, citing the existence of great teachers as, such as Tentai, Nyolo, and others, who clarified, clarified the profound principles of the Lotus Sutra. He notes that while some of them may have chanted the title of the Lotus Sutra themselves, they did not share or spread this practice with the general population. 
Even during the two millennia of the former and middle days of the law, after the Buddha's passing, people placed their faith in chanting the names of various Buddhas and Bodhisattvas appearing in different sutras. This included Amida Buddha, Mihaira Chana, Shakyamuni Buddha, Bodhisattva, a perceiver of the world's sounds, and Medicine Master Buddha. Why was it then that the Daimoku of the Lotus Sutra was not spread in the former and middle days of the law? In this writing, Nichiren attributes it to two main reasons. The time had not yet come, and the person entrusted with propagating the Daimoku had not yet appeared in the world. Very simply. Yeah. Okay? It wasn't yet the latter day, and the original teacher had not made his advent. Nietzsche observes that during these earlier periods, the sickness of delusion afflicting people's, uh, uh, affecting people's lives, pardon me, the sickness of delusion affecting people had not yet become critical. Therefore, even chanting the names of Buddhas or Bodhisattvas of the provisional pre-Lotus uh, Sutra teachings and the theoretical teaching first half of the Lotus Sutra, such as Amida and Mahavrochana and perceiver of the world sounds, could serve to relieve this spiritual affliction. This is the first reason why the Daishonin asserts that the time had not yet come for the Daimoku of the Lotus Sutra to spread. However, he declares that the grave illness of slandering the law that afflicts the people of the latter day can be fundamentally cured only by the great beneficial medicine of the five characters of Myoho Rengeku, the title of the Lotus Sutra. So what does Nichiren declare? that no one else has declared. He's saying that, that was then, this is now. Okay, according to the sutra, we're in the five, fifth 500 year period. So all that other stuff you guys are doing, that was all meant as an expedient means. And that was all meant as an expedient means to lead you to the teaching of Lotus Sutra, which you've all declared to be too difficult. And you've subjugated it once again by continuing to venerate these other Buddhas other than Shakyamuni. So I'm focusing on bringing forth just the title rather than confuse you with all this other stuff that's in the Sutra itself. Just chant nam myoho kyo and devote yourself to the Sutra as the Sutra teaches and you'll attain Buddhahood in your present form. This is exactly the basis of the beginning of the Buddhism of the sowing. All right, he says, however, he declares that the grave illness of slandering the law that afflicts the people of the latter day, all of them, according to the Lotus Sutra, are afflicted, right? Mm -hmm. They're all stained by the five impurities, right? Mm -hmm. That's what's happened by now. Mm -hmm. What they basically, the basic premise was, Salvation was less difficult to achieve in the former day and the middle day because the karma of the people wasn't as steeped in slander as it is in the latter day. So he's saying, however, he declares that the grave illness of slandering the law that afflicts the people of the latter day can be fundamentally cured only by the great beneficial medicine of the five characters of the Daimoku, the title, Okay. Everybody's with me? Yeah. Okay, so he says, the people of the latter day are powerfully driven by deluded impulses arising from the three poisons of greed, anger, and foolishness. No matter how much they, may be, they make, uh, no matter how much they called on the names of various Buddhas, doing so would only re increase their dependence on those Buddhas for their salvation, which would prevent them from carrying out their own spiritual transformation. What is their own spiritual, what's this, pre, what, what, what's this prevented uh, spiritual transformation? He's saying to call out on those names is going to keep them from the spiritual transformation that can only occur from chanting the Daimoku. What is that spiritual transformation? Actual Ichin and Sanzen, the realization that they are Buddhas themselves exactly as they are, that there's no reason to call out to Mahavrochana or Amida or Shakyamuni or something greater outside of myself, mm -hmm. okay? That's the spiritual transformation, transformation that cannot occur if they constantly rely on something outside of themselves. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. That's why he's got to break them from that. 
That's why now is the time when everyone must be broken from that because there is no salvation in those other Buddhas taking care of you. You're the only Buddha that takes care of you. Yes. Okay? It's through Nichiren's teaching, but you are the Buddha that takes care of you. You are the Buddha that creates the fortune that manifests as the benefits that you enjoy in your life as benefit of practice. Mm. That's not being sent airmail or special <laughs> delivery or FedEx from somebody listening. It's a manifestation of your life. So, he says, which would prevent them from carrying out their own spiritual transformation, attaining actually to the sons. No matter how they called on the name of some external Buddha, they would neither be able to realize interchange nor attain Buddhahood. Realizing interchange is the attainment of Buddhahood in your present form as actual Ichin and Sanzen. That's the same thing as Buddhahood. You already got it? In contrast, Nam Yoho Rengeko is the ultimate law that is the seed or cause for the enlightenment of all Buddhas, including Shakyamuni. Wow, great declarative there. The truth. Nam Yoho Rengeko is the ultimate law that is the seed or cause for the enlightenment of all Buddhas, including Shakyamuni. Okay, so what is Shakyamuni's teaching actually doing? What is the function of the Buddhism of the harvest? To, lead to prepare for the Buddhism of the sowing. Okay, the Buddhism of the sowing is the teaching that can only be revealed in the fifth half millennium. That is the teaching that is the original source of Shakyamuni Buddha, his enlightenment, okay? So he says, this law alone has the power to fundamentally relieve the sufferings of the people of the latter day. Accordingly, Nichiren teaches that chanting Nam-myoho-renge-kyo alone, not, only, uh, nor, not the names of provisional bo bo Buddhas or Bodhisattvas, will open the path to Buddhahood in this defiled age. Next, the question of the entrustment of the law. In the Lotus Sutra, Shakyamuni Buddha entrusts Bodhisattva's superior practices, the leader of the Bodhisattvas of the earth, with the future propagation of the law in the latter day. The people of this evil age who are deemed to have an adverse uh, capacity to understand the Buddhist teachings can gain enlightenment only by embracing the five characters of Myoho Rengekyo, pardon me, the fundamental seed of Buddhahood. The fundamental seed of Buddhahood. In the absence of Myoho Rengekyo, there is no seed. There is no Buddhahood. The Bodhisattvas of the earth are disciples of Shakyamuni from the distant past, his original disciples, he says, and are the ones together with superior practices who are actually entrusted with the supreme law. Okay? But once again, who's actually entrusted? The original teacher and the original disciples. All right? So he says, they make their appearance already possessing the law of Nam Myoho Rengekyo. Do you understand? That's why their minds can't be twisted, he says later in this Go Show. It's only because of that existing relationship that they are able to propagate the law in the latter day. They make their appearance already possessing the law of Nam Yoho Rengekyo, the teaching of sowing, because they're sowers. Do you understand? All right. Although in their actions and practice they are bodhisattvas, they possess the ultimate law by which all Buddhas attain enlightenment. Therefore, the tenth world is activated in their lives. They are Buddhas exactly as they are. That is why they are able to correctly guide all people in this evil age of the latter day. That all makes sense, right? Very logical, right? All right. Many people throughout the centuries had read the Lotus Sutra. But Nichiren Daishonin was the only person who understood the role to be fulfilled by Bodhisattva superior practices, and he rose to action to propagate the Daimoku Lotus Sutra among the populace. He had read all the sutras. He had read the Lotus Sutra. He had seen what was written in those sutras and what was written in the Lotus Sutra, and he anticipated all this. 
That's why when he came up, he's just like in a dream. I know it was supposed to be Bodhisattva Superior Practices. And of course, I couldn't be Bodhisattva Superior Practices. But for some reason, I'm doing this. So maybe I am Bodhisattva Superior Practices. It doesn't matter. The point is that the Daimoku has made his advent. And this is the teaching for the latter day of the law. And I can validate it on any number of doctrinal or uh, theoretical basis, but I have actual proof. I have the actual proof of Tatsunokuchi persecution of the Izu Peninsula exile, of everything that was supposed to be happening to the person that would bring forth this law in the latter day. Many people throughout the centuries had read the Lotus Sutra, but Nichiren Daishon was the only person who understood the role to be fulfilled by Bodhisattva superior practices, and he rose to action to propagate the Daimoku of the Lotus Sutra among the populace. He didn't sit and say, oh, this isn't my job, but I should wait for this guy's superior practices, whoever he is. That isn't the way it works. Okay? You know. Your life speaks to you. Your life speaks to you in front of the Gohonza. There's no doubt. You do what you know you have to do. In this writing, he explains his own position, saying, I, Nitrin, am not a founder of any school, nor am I a latter-day follower of any older school. He makes it very clear that he does not belong to any of the established streams of Buddhism that arose during the 2,000 years of the former and middle days of the law. What I'm doing has never been done before. What I'm doing was not taught to me. Okay? This passage honestly describes his position as an ordinary individual living in the latter day, just like us, who, without relying on the authority of any existing Buddhist school and without the patronage of any powerful secular figure, read the Lotus Sutra true to the Buddha's intent and embarked on the struggle of Bodhisattva superior practices to propagate the mystic law. And we emulate him as the original teacher, right? That's the original mentor, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what we do, mm -hmm. all right? Nietzsche further states that he is a mm -hmm. priest without precepts, neither keeping the precepts nor breaking them, and is neither particularly wise nor ignorant. He is essentially saying that he is a person who does not fit in, in, into any pre-established category of the Buddhist schools of his day or any, to any previous description of a Buddha. Nichiren always stood free from the confines and constraints of existing religious convention or authority. And so why should we be shackled by it? Why would Daisako Keita make that point clearly if he's not making that point to us as individuals? Nichiren always stood free from the confines and constraints of existing religious convention or authority. As an ordinary individual living in the defiled age of the latter day, he focused his full attention on the Lotus Sutra, on the teaching of the Buddhism of the Sowing and Shakyamuni Buddha, working tirelessly to establish a people-centered Buddhism in the latter day of the law as taught in the Lotus Sutra as taught by Nichiren. We can each do that same thing and do it with our whole life. Do you understand? So he's saying, we can also infer that the Daishonin consistently stressed his ordinariness as a human being to demonstrate how brilliantly the human spirit can shine when one strives unflaggingly in accord with the Buddha's intent to lead all people to enlightenment. If that's what you're trying to do, then you're doing the right thing, no matter what anybody says. All right? For it is only through such dedicated efforts that a Buddhism accessible to ordinary people can be realized. So that's why there are so many dispensers of the law. That's why there are so, all the Bodhisattvas are different. We all have different missions. All right? so that this can be something for everyone. We all have specific people that we're supposed to communicate it to. In Nichiren Buddhism, action is the key. This act of propagation and chanting Daimoku for the sake of the law. In Nichiren Buddhism, action is key. In an early Buddhist text, we find these immortal words by Shakyamuni, not by birth, does one become an outcast? Not by birth 
does one become a Brahmin? You understand those are the two opposite ends of the spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. an, a, a, a Dalya, or an untouchable, versus a Brahmin, right? By action, one becomes an outcast. By action, one becomes a Brahmin. So what's he saying there? Karma is everything. What you do is what you get. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's not about anything other than what you do. That's why the key action. thing in Nietzsche and Buddhism, the key is action is key. Yes. Okay? You can talk and you can talk and you can talk and you can wish and you can want all you want to wish and want. <laughs> yes. It's yeah. not worth shit. Right. <laughs> okay? Action, bodhicitta, that's the only thing that matters. By action, we become, by action, one becomes an outcast. By action, one becomes a Brahmin. This statement uh, that people are defined not by the circumstances of their birth, but by their actions is a declare, declaration of human equality that shines with brilliance in the present age. Nietzsche personally achieved the great undertaking that Bodhisattva Superior Practice had been destined to carry out. He encountered many challenging obstacles and persecutions along the way just as the Lotus Sutra predicted. Given that his efforts uh, validate the Sutra's assertions, the Daishonin declares that he surely must equal the sages Tintai and Dingyo. He proclaims that his own struggles are themselves equivalent to the struggles of genuine sages. In other words, he wanted to show us, ordinary people of the latter day, that when awakened individuals stand up with a personal commitment... Not the group commitment, not the herd commitment, mm -hmm. the personal commitment. I will do Kosa Rufu by myself. The first thing that this lecture started with back here, President Makaguchi, President Toda, their attitude. He's saying, in other words, he wanted to show us ordinary people of the latter day that when awakened individuals stand up with a personal commitment to fulfill their true mission, they can actualize the immeasurably noble goal of enabling all people to attain Buddhahood. How are we doing on time? I've got plenty of time. All right. Practicing based on the Lotus Sutra. And this is key because this whole thing is like progressed, right? Based on the practicing on the Buddhist on practicing the Buddhist teachings was what we did a three-part lecture on, right? Mm -hmm. So he says, practicing based on the Lotus Sutra from the Gosho. But I am different from such persons. I firmly uphold the teaching that the Lotus Sutra is supreme among the sutras. The Buddha has preached, now preaches, and will preach. Moreover, I chant the Daimoku, which is the heart and core of the entire sutra, and I urge others to do likewise. Again, always the Jigyokate, the part of this. Got to do it for other people. Although the mugwort growing in a hemp field or wood marked for cutting with an ink line may not be straight to begin with, they will, as a matter of course, become so. In the same way, when one chants the Daimoku of the Lotus as the Lotus Sutra teaches, pardon me, one who chants the Daimoku as the Lotus Sutra teaches will never have a twisted mind. Will never have a twisted mind. For one should know that unless the mind of the Buddha enters into our bodies, we cannot in fact <laughs> chant the Daimoku. How did Nichiren come to be the first person of the latter, in the latter day to recognize the time and begin spreading the Daimoku of Lotus Sutra of his own volition? Of his own volition? Because he decided he wanted to? He offers an answer in this passage in which he underscores the importance of faithfully practicing just as the Buddha teaches. That I shown and exemplified, it, exemplified this commitment in his own actions, always basing himself on the Lotus Sutra and not the interpretations of various teachers and scholars of Buddhism. In contrast, the founders of the different Buddhist schools, apart from the great teachers Tintai and Dingyo, who upheld the Lotus Sutra, had all diverged from the true spirit of the Lotus Sutra, having only read its texts in reference to the particular sutras on which they based their own doctrines. Because they attempted to understand the Lotus Sutra from the viewpoint of the pre-Lotus Sutra teachings, they failed to comprehend the essence of the Lotus Sutra as a teaching of universal enlightenment, grounded in the doctrines of the mutual possession of the ten worlds and the three thousand worlds, uh, three thousand realms in a single moment of life. For that reason, it was as if they hadn't read the Lotus Sutra at all. What did he just say there? What did he just say there so clearly? Mm -hmm. Did you catch it again? 
Don't forget, whenever you see him say mutual possession of the ten worlds and in the next sentence say, and the three thousand realms in a single moment of life, what is he talking about? Each and in signs. Mm -hmm. And what is each and in signs is key? The mutual possession of the ten worlds, Buddhahood in your present form. You're already the Buddha exactly as you are. The tenth world is part of the inseparable nine. Okay? Mm -hmm. So he's saying... They failed because they viewed the flower gar the Lotus Sutra from the perspective of the Flower Garland Sutra or the Mahavrachana Sutra Sutra or the uh, any other sutra. They failed to comprehend the essence of the Lotus Sutra as a teacher, teaching of universal enlightenment, as a teaching saying, You will all attain Buddhahood. You are all Buddhas just as you are. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. Grounded in the doctrine. Now, where's the doctrine of the mutual possession of the ten worlds come from? That doesn't come until ten times. So don't misunderstand what he's saying. But he's saying, in the latter day, in Nichiren's time in Japan, they could have been reading the Lotus Sutra from the same perspective that Nichiren was because it was already the fifth half millennium, fifth 500-year period, right? Mm -hmm. They could have read the same stuff Nichiren read where he said, D -d -d don't, 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 don't. They could have rejected the expedient means or seen them as expedient means. But they didn't, because they, so they didn't comprehend the essence of the sutra as being as a teaching of universal enlightenment. Everybody's the Buddha, grounded in the doctrines of the mutual possession of the ten worlds and three thousand realms in a single moment of life. You got it. Mm -hmm. For that reason, it was if they hadn't read the Lotus Sutra at all, because that's the whole fundamental reason to read the Lotus Sutra. That is the teaching of the Lotus Sutra. How to attain Buddhahood in your present form. That's the whole deal. That's why, for the first time ever, Shakyamuni speaks. He preaches the Lotus Sutra. He doesn't have bodhisattvas come and do it for him or some other weird people up here. That's the one where Shakyamuni himself preaches. Understand that. The Mahavrachana Sutra is not preached by Shakyamuni Buddha. You know that, right? Okay? All of these sutras. Uh, you know, Amida. The same thing. All right, so... Stating that he is different from these founders of the other Buddhist schools, which he obviously is, the Daishonin writes, I firmly uphold the teaching that the Lotus Sutra is supreme among the sutras the Buddha has preached, now preaches, and will preach. Because that's what that sutra says. Mm -hmm. He indicates that he has been chanting Nam Myoho Rengekyo on his own and teaching others to do the same, in exact accord with the Lotus Sutra, which encompasses the very essence of the Buddha's lifetimes of teachings. The essence is the fact that... Uh, Myoho Rengekyo is the, is, the, is the original state. Here he em emphasizes believing and following the teachings of the Lotus Sutra. Just as the winding stems of mugwort grow straight in a field of hemp, or as wood is cut in straight lines by using a string inking device, when we chant the Daimoku as the Lotus Sutra teaches, our minds will not turn to twisting or distorting the true intent of, the, of Shakyamuni Buddha. Nietzsche further says... For one should know that unless the mind of the Buddha enters into our bodies, we cannot in fact chant the Daimoku. This is an, an extremely important passage. Why? Because the teaching is supreme, so is the practitioner. This is basically acknowledging that... Uh, <clears throat> One should know that unless the mind of the Buddha enters into our bodies, we cannot, chant, in fact, chant the Daimoku. So what's that saying? If we chant the Daimoku, then the mind of the Buddha has already entered our bodies. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. The tenth world is already activated in our lives. Yes. That's the same thing as saying that. Not the Shakyamuni, the dude, like came and is residing in us no. in some weird way. He's talking about eternal Buddha. All right, so he's basically saying this is an important message, extremely important message. Why? Because this is what establishes you as the Buddha, exactly as you are right now, not someday when you become qualified, right? This is what says everybody's the Buddha right now, exactly as they are. But they're either existing in the delusion to that truth or they're existing in the reality of that truth. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. So he's saying, in, in expedient means, the second chapter of the Lotus Sutra, we find the words, honestly discarding expedient means. What's that mean? That means letting go of all of those things that were training reels, teachings. Right? The Lotus Sutra is thus a teaching in which Shakyamuni 
honestly discards teachings and directs uh, expedient teachings and directly preaches the true way for attaining Buddhahood himself with his own mouth. And in the lifespan, the 16th chapter of the Lotus Sutra, Shakyamuni speaks of people who are honest and upright, gentle and intent, single-mindedly desiring to see the Buddha, not hesitating even if it costs them their lives. The bodhisattvas of the earth that will appear in the fifth half millennium and after, right? Mm -hmm. Accordingly, even in the latter day of the law, the mind of the Buddha will come to function in the lives of those who believe in the Lotus Sutra, having cast aside their attachments to arbitrary views and erroneous wisdom. In other words, getting rid of expedient means, right? Sincerely accepting the Buddha's teachings, accepting only nam myoho renge and with gentle hearts and single-mindedly seeking the Buddha with unbegrudging devotion, seek to spread the law and propagate the law in the latter day in the Chief Kos and Rufu. Do you understand what he's talking about? It's all tied together, but it's tied together and backwards. Nichiren fully and wholeheartedly accepted the Lotus Sutra, which directly elucidates the heart and intent of the Buddha. But it's only based on his teachings that this all becomes real and understandable and valid. Do understand that. It's all based on Shakyamuni, but until he does all this stuff that Shakyamuni has said will be done, none of it's real. None of what Shakyamuni has said is real. He's the one that makes it real. By virtue of his own life, by virtue of the Buddhism and the sowing, making its advent in the fifth half millennium. Do you understand? Yes. Other than that, everything <clears throat> Shakyamuni said, it's all gobbled to get poop. Do you understand? Seriously. In the absence of Nietzsche, there is no Buddhism of the harvest. Period. Nietzsche fully and wholeheartedly accepted the Lotus Sutra, which directly elucidates the heart and intent of the Buddha. As a result, on his own, he quite naturally realized the significance of the teaching of the five characters of Myoho Rengekyo and the significance of the latter day as being the time for widely spreading the mystic law. It was the same kind of recognition Bodhisattva's superior practices had when he heard the wonderful teaching preached directly from the golden mouth of Shakyamuni Buddha the ceremony in the air, during the ceremony in the air and was entrusted with the mission of propagating this teaching in the evil latter age after the Buddha's passing. Okay? The Lotus Sutra forewarns that those who practice exactly as it teaches will invariably encounter great obstacles and persecutions. Teacher of the Law, the 10th chapter, states, since hatred and jealousy toward this sutra abound, even when the thus come one is in the world, how much more will this be so after his passing? Peaceful practices, the 14th chapter says, the sutra will face much hostility in the world and be difficult to believe. And encouraging devotion, the 13th chapter, describes in detail the three powerful enemies who will assail the practitioners of the Lotus Sutra in the latter day. Nietzsche experienced hardships and practitioners, just as the sutra describes, thereby proving the truth of Shakyamuni's teaching. In this connection, he writes, if I, Nietzsche, had not been born in the land of Japan, then these passages of the sutra would have been mere words on the Buddha's part, empty of all significance. And it is the Soka Gakkai that has carried on the direct lineage of Nietzsche and Daishonin and proven the validity of his teachings. Over the past eight decades since its founding, the Soka Gakkai has steadfastly fought and won through faith that is directly connected to the Daishonin and is based on his writings. As a result, we can share the correct teaching of Nichiren Buddhism with people around the world and develop our organization to encompass a total of 192 countries and territories. Mr. Makaguchi was determined not to let Nichiren Buddhism remain buried away as a religion to which people paid only token homage at temples. This was the situation that grew out of the compulsory danke, or parish system, introduced in Japan from around the mid-17th century. Returning to the original spirit of the Daishonin, he vowed to make Nichiren's teachings accessible to ordinary people the world over. He not only revitalized Buddhism as a practical philosophy for leading a value-creating life, but he also re revived Buddhist practice aimed at the realization of Kosen Rufu, stressing that it is important to show actual proof of the beneficial power of the mystic law. I want to say that again, because this is real key for you to all to understand. This is what he did. He not only revitalized Buddhism as a practical philosophy for leading a value-creating life, 
but he also revived Buddhist practice. Because again, everybody was just going to the temple on Sunday and listening to Anoko. He's the one that said, no, get benefits. It's reward and punishment, right? So he's talking about, he also revived Buddhist practice aimed at the realization of world peace. Widespread propagation, stressing that it is important to show actual proof of the beneficial power of faith in the mystic law. And you can only do that through practice. That only comes through practice. Mm -hmm. How, moreover, Mr. Makaguchi himself practiced Nietzsche and Buddhism with an attitude of great strictness towards slander of the law. When the Nichiren Shoshu priesthood demanded that members of Soka Gakkai accept the Shinto talisman in line with the direction of the wartime militarist authorities, he, Mr. Makaguchi, adamantly refused to comply. His dignified and decisive stance was that of a true heir to the lineage of faith in Nichiren Buddhism. Mr. Toda also engraved the Daishonin's writings in his life. Awakening to his mission as a bodhisattva of the earth, he vowed to realize Kosen Rufu and work tirelessly to lead people to genuine happiness. As Mr. Toda's disciple, I too have taken full responsibility for Kosen Rufu, working together with my sincere and noble fellow members throughout uh, Japan and the world. We have battled the three powerful enemies and four devils. <clears throat> Pardon me. We have battled the three obstacles and four devils, including the, insidi the insidious workings of the devil king of the sixth heaven and have triumphed over the three powerful enemies. We have won in every sphere and struggle. It is we of the Soka Gakkai who are living the writings of Nietzsche and Daishonin and improving their relevance and validity in the present age. Okay? Are you doing that? Yeah. That's what you should be doing. Our organization alone has inherited the true spirit of Nietzsche and Buddhism and is faithfully carrying out the Buddha's decree. Our 80-year history, a history of practicing in accord with the Buddhist teachings, without begrudging our lives, without begrudging our lives, notice how he puts that in there, without begrudging our lives, is an unequivocal testimony to the Soka Gakkai's legitimacy as an organization of Kosen Rufu. The beginning of all things. Um, let me read this, these last few pages and be, go through this whole writing. The beginning of all things. This is from the Gosho. In this entire country of Japan, I am the only one who has been chanting nam myoho renge -kyo. I am like the single speck of dust that marks the beginning of Mount Sumeru, or the single drop of dew that spells the start of the great ocean. Probably two people, three people, ten people, a hundred people will join in chanting it until it spreads to one province, two provinces, and all 60 provinces in Japan, and reaches even the two islands of Iki and Tsushima. Those persons who have spoken slanderous, slanderously of me will in time chant in the, uh, pardon me, will in time chant in the same way. And everyone from the ruler on down to the multitude of common people will, as described in the Supernatural Powers chapter of Lotus Sutra, chant nam myoho renge with a single voice. Though the trees may desire to be still, the wind will not cease to blow. Though one may wish for spring to linger, it must give way to summer. Nietzsche and Daishonin rose up alone and set in motion the propagation of the mystic law in the latter day. In this respect, he says, he is like the single speck of dust that marks the beginning of Mount Sumeru, or the single drop of dew that spells the start of the great ocean. Through his struggles since pro proclaiming the establishment of his teaching in 1253, the numbers of those chanting nam myoho renge -kyo had steadily grown to two, three, ten, a hundred, or countless more. The groundswell of propagation had spread from one province to another and then eventually throughout all 66 provinces of Japan and even to Iki and Tsushima, two islands in southern Japan that bore the brunt of the Mongol attack in 1274. Apparently, when Nichiren's predicament of the two calamities of foreign invasion and internal strife came to pass, even those who had originally criticized and maligned him came to change their attitude toward him. He declares, though the trees may desire to, be, to still, be still, the wind will not cease to blow. Though we may wish for spring to linger, it must give way to summer. No matter how much we try to resist, nature and the season continue to move and change. It is that I've shown his firm conviction that with the same unceasing power, Kosen Rufu of the mystic law will definitely be achieved. 
An important lesson in this writing is the fact that Kosen Rufu is realized through one person reaching out and sharing the correct teaching with another. So that means any one of you with another individual. Kosen Rufu is achieved through one person reaching out and sharing the correct teaching with another. As indicated by the passage, two people, three people, ten people, a hundred people will join in chanting Nam Myoho Rengekyo. This is because Kosen Rufu is a movement to awaken the lives of one person after another. In exact accord with Nichiren's words, we of the Soka Gakkai have spread the correct teaching by talking with others and telling them about our Buddhist practice. The cornerstones of our movement are one-to-one -one dialogue and discussion meetings. All right? Not just watching these videos. It was Mr. Makaguchi who began this tradition of dialogue and discussion uh, and discussion meetings to a youth who suggested that holding large-scale lectures might be more effective than discussion meetings. Mr. Makaguchi said with keen insight, no, it wouldn't. Dialogue is the only way to communicate with another about life's problems. At a lecture, listeners invariably feel uninvolved. Even Nietzsche and Daishonin's treatise on establishing the correct teaching for the peace of the land was written in the form of a dialogue, you know. Mr. Toda often said, Kosen Rufu will be realized through one-to-one, face-to-face dialogue. With the same conviction, I have made constant efforts to engage in one-to-one -one dialogue. The important thing is encouraging each person one-to-one -one with genuine warmth and humanity and inspiring them in faith. As long as this tradition stays alive, the Soka Gakkai's continued development is assured. So that's imperative, guys. Praising those... So, so again, Kosen Rufu will not happen if you guys just come here every week. You've got to reach out to other people. I've got to reach out to other people. We have to have a life-to-life -life communication with other people actively engaged at all times. I know you all do. Praising those who uphold the mystic law. In view of all this, your sincerity in sending a gift of five strings of blue duck coins whenever the opportunity arises truly entitles you to be known as one who propagates the Daimoku of the Lotus Sutra in Japan. As first one person, then two persons, then a thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand, and then all the people throughout the country come to chant the Daimoku. Before you know it, their blessings will accrue to you. Those blessings will be like the drops of dew that gather to form the great ocean or the specks of dust that pile up to become Mount Sumeru. The more gold is heated in the flames, the brighter it will, <clears throat> will be its color. The more sword is wetted, the sharper it will become. The more one praises the blessings of the Lotus Sutra, the more one's own blessings will increase. Bear in mind that the 28 chapters of the Lotus Sutra contain only a few passages elucidating the truth, but a great many words of praise. In this closing section, and we're just about done, in this closing section, Nichiren Daishonin warmly encourages Myomitsu and his wife, who have supported his efforts for Kosen Rufu by sending him gifts of five strings of blue duck coins on numerous occasions. He says that Momitsu's act of making sincere offerings is the same as propagating the Daimoku of the Lotus Sutra in Japan. Thus, when people throughout the land chant nam myoho Rengekyo, their blessings will all accrue to Myomitsu. Not only will he enjoy immense benefit as vast as the Great Ocean or Mount Sumeru, but he will also receive the absolute protection of the heavenly deities. Nichiren further encourages Myomitsu's wife, who supported her husband, Persevering in faith in the mystic law in the latter day is truly uh, commend uh, is a truly is a truly commendable achievement. The Daishonin always deeply treasured his followers who strove alongside him for Kosarufu. We can easily imagine how his sincere encouragement would have inspired the people to redouble their efforts with fresh resolve. The more gold is heated in flames, the brighter will be his color. The more a sword is wetted, the sharper it will become, he says. The more gold is purified by fire, the more luminous it becomes. The more a sword is sharpened, the finer its edge. The more one praises the benefits of the Lotus Sutra, the more one's own benefits will increase. That is very important for you to know. If you don't know that, know that. I'll say it again. The more one praises the benefits of the Lotus Sutra, the more benefits one's own benefits will increase. I have experienced that to the max in my own life. If you constantly talk about all the benefits, when you, when, you, when you constantly see your life as being governed by the cause and effect of being a bodhisattva of the earth, 
then everything that happens to you is, again, that battle that's in the process of being won. It's never about being defeated. So you're constantly, constantly praising the effect of the law no matter what you're experiencing because you're filled with conviction of victory, right? And the more you express that conviction of victory, which is faith, that's what conviction of victory is, is faith, right? The more you express your faith to others, the more the effect of that faith as good fortune will be reflected in your life. That I can assure you. That's the way it works. Okay, it's all about your actions. You're the one that creates your own fortune. Um, <clears throat> in the Lotus Sutra itself, there are only a few pages elucidating the essence of the law. Overall, the 28 chapters of the Lotus Sutra could be said to be dedicated almost entirely to describing multitudes of living beings unanimously la uh, landing lauding the blessings of the law of universal enlightenment, the fact that we're all Buddhas exactly as we are. They praise Shakyamuni Buddha, many treasures, and the Buddhas of throughout the ten directions. <clears throat> they urge living beings everywhere to accept and uphold the mystic law. When read in terms of meaning hidden in the depths of its text, the entire Lotus Sutra extols the beneficial power of nam myoho Gekyo. Understand that. Okay? The function of the Buddhism of the harvest is to prepare and, and, and give way to the, Buddha, uh, the Buddhism of the sowing. Praise for the mystic law fills one's life with blessings, and praise for those who uphold and propagate the mystic law increases those blessings exponentially. Our infinitely noble potential. We who uphold the mystic law believe that all people, both ourselves and others, innately possess the supreme uh, life state of Buddhahood. When we strive as emissaries and disciples of the Buddha, chanting the Daimoku of the Lotus Sutra ourselves and encouraging others to do the same, we can spread the philosophy of genuine respect for the sanctity of, far, of life far and wide and enrich the world through the workings of Buddhist compassion. What our world needs today are more and more genuinely committed people who embody the life and affirming ideals of the Lotus Sutra. Did you hear what he just said there? What our world needs today are more and more genuinely committed people who embody the life-affirming ideals of the Lotus Sutra, that they are Buddhas exactly as they are, mm -hmm. that they draw forth on the inseparable tenth world from the nine that they dwell in. That is, that is the world needs individuals who can teach others through their personal experiences and actions that all people alike are endowed with infinitely noble potential. Everybody got what that just said, right? Mm -hmm. uh, by awakening to that inner potential, we can defeat the discrimination that is the fundamental source of all evil, which arises from the, fun from the darkness and ignorance in human life. Also, only when we deeply recognize the inherent dignity of all human beings can we triumph in the struggle to fundamentally overcome the, per, uh, the perennial problem of war that plagues humanity? Nichiren had some 700 years after Buddhism was, uh, pardon me, Nichiren lived some 700 years after Buddhism was first introduced to Japan. In a dark time when the pure law of Shakyamuni was on the brink of perishing, the Daishonin made his appearance and established the Buddhism of the sun to illuminate all humanity. And as he chronicles in this writing, he embarked on spreading the Daimoku of the Lotus Sutra throughout the entire country. By some mystic working of destiny, the Soka Gakkai appeared 700 years after Nichiren's passing, at a time when the pure flow of Nichiren Buddhism was in, a da was in danger of being lost. Mr. Makaguchi and Mr. Tota strove to enable as many people as possible to embrace faith in the Gohonzon, the embodiment of Nam Myoho Rengeko so that each person would awaken to the, to the supreme dignity of their own life. Showing actual proof of the beneficial power of faith in the Gohonzon and wishing to share the joy of faith with others, so Gagakai members actively spread Nichiren Buddhism and helped con countless people receive the Gohonzon. Propagation of the Gohonzon truly began in earnest only through the efforts of the Soka Gakkai. That is a fact, 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 fact. Today, we of the Soka Gakkai have secured the foundations for worldwide Kozen Rufu and the westward transmission of Buddhism. And veritably, all the nations and people throughout the entire world are voicing high aspirations for the humanism of Nichiren Buddhism. 
Praise and recognition for the activities of SGI members who embody the Lotus Sutra's life-affirming ideals increase with each passing day. The time for us to embark on the full-fledged development of worldwide Kosen Rufu has arrived. Most important are all of you, my precious fellow members who are polishing your lives day in and day out through participating in SGI activities. The Daishonin spirit of Kosen Rufu and the 80-year history and tradition of Soka Gakkai all pulse vibrantly in your hearts. Nichiren would surely praise you. My wife and I are also praying for the good health and vigorous endeavors of each of you who is an irreplaceable treasure. Now is the time for us to make fresh, a fresh departure on the grand stage of worldwide coast and roof that encompasses all humanity. Let us challenge ourselves afresh, each determined with, to be a single speck of dust that marks the beginning of a new towering Mount Sumeru or a single drop of dew that starts the spell, that spells the start of a new great ocean. In other words, we'll each do it on our own regardless of anybody else. The founding spirit of the Soka Gakkai lies in mentor and disciple advancing together with the self-motivated spirit of, it starts with me, it starts from now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat>